Good day, learners. Welcome to our new lesson. In our previous lesson, we talked about photosynthesis, specifically the light-dependent reaction. It happens inside the leaves where plants make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis means to put together by light. So in the process of photosynthesis, they will need raw materials such as carbon dioxide and water. Now here are the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water putting together through light energy inside the chlorophyll to form glucose and oxygen. Now the overall product of light-dependent reaction, ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. Again, there are two stages of photosynthesis, the light-dependent reaction and the light-independent reaction. We already discussed the light-dependent reaction in our previous video. And for this video, we're going to talk about the light-independent reaction or what we call the Calvin Cycle. Calvin Cycle is named after Melvin Calvin, who won a 1961 Nobel Prize for working out this complex set of chemical reactions. Calvin cycle occurs in the chloroplast stroma just after completing the light reaction of photosynthesis. The light reaction helps Calvin cycle by providing ATP, which is its source of energy, and an NADPH for reducing ability. Now, there are three stages of Calvin cycle. Stage 1 is the carbon fixation. Stage 2, the reduction. And stage 3 is the regeneration. Now, let's start with stage 1, which is carbon dioxide fixation. Carbon dioxide enters through the stomata, then diffuse into the stroma of the chloroplast. Carbon dioxide combined with RUDP5 or ribulose diphosphate to form an unstable 6-carbon or what we call the RUDP6. In other books or reference, RUDP5 is also called as 5-carbon molecule ribulose biphosphate. Carbon dioxide combined with RUDP5 to form an unstable 6-carbon dioxide or RUDP6. RUDP5 is also known as carbon dioxide acceptor. Now, RUDP6 splits into two molecules of phosphoglycerate or 3-phosphoglyceric acid or 3-PGA. Now, this stage of Calvin cycle is catalyzed by the enzymes Rubisco. Now, for stage 2, the reduction phase, using the energy from ATP, 3-PGA molecules are converted into 3-carbon sugar or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P or phosphoglyceraldehyde or PGAL. This stage involves the enzyme of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase in which NADPH from light reaction acts as a donor or acts as an electron donor. Now, here are the summary of the change of PGA to PGAL. PGA plus ATP plus NADPH become PGAL plus NADP plus ADP NADP and ADP are available again for conversion during cyclic and non-cyclic reaction. Now for stage 3, which is the final stage, it starts with G3P. Some G3P or PGAL is utilized in making glucose, while others are recycled to continue the cycle by combining with a carbon acceptor or RUDP5. Assuming that there are 6 carbon dioxide enters the reaction, 12 PGAL will be formed, 10 of this will be enzymatically rearranged to replace the loss of RUDP5, and only 2 will become glucose. Now for us to better understand the Calvin cycle, let us use the interactive simulation that I presented to you last video. So here we're gonna choose Calvin cycle. As you can see, there are three phases for Calvin cycle. For phase 1, we have the carbon fixation. Phase 2, the reduction phase. And phase 3, we have the regeneration of RUBP or RUDP5. Now, let's proceed with phase 1, which is the carbon fixation. So, this is the rubisco or the enzyme used in this phase. The RUBP or RUDP5, as you can see, there are 5 carbons. RUBP or RUDP5 is also known as carbon dioxide acceptor. During this phase, carbon dioxide is attached to RUBP through the use of the enzymes Rubisco. Then, 
it will become RUDP6. RUDP6 will split into two molecules of phosphoglycerate or 3-phosphoglyceric acid. Again, during carbon fixation, carbon dioxide is attached to RUBP5 by the enzyme Surbisco. This forms two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate for each carbon dioxide added. Next, we have phase 2, the reduction phase. Here, we're going to use the phosphoglycerate, the NADPH, and ATP from the light-dependent reaction. Using the energy from ATP, phosphoglycerate are converted into 3 carbon sugar, while NADPH will act as an electron donor. So from phosphoglycerate, it will become glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. So we already have one molecule of G3P. So let's repeat the process. As you can see, after the conversion of ATP, it will reduce to ADP, and NADPH will become NADP plus and PI. Now, ADP, NADP+, and PI will be available again for the light reaction. Again, during the reduction phase, each molecule of 3-phosphoglycerate is reduced to form G3P. And this requires energy from ATP and electrons from NADPH. G3P is the final product of the Calvin cycle. One molecule of G3P will leave the Calvin cycle and be used to form organic compounds like glucose or sugar. Now for the last phase, which is the regeneration of RUBP or RUDP5. The other five G3P molecules are used to regenerate RUBP so that Calvin cycle can continue. The reactions that regenerate RUBP require energy to occur. This energy comes from ATP. So here we're going to drag the three ATP molecules to the reaction site. As you can see, the RUBP or RUDP5 is readily available again to continue the cycle. The Calvin cycle can now start over again with the carbon fixation. Now to summarize photosynthesis, let us explain this diagram. For light reaction, this stage uses water and changes light energy from the sun into chemical energy stored in ATP and NADPH. This stage also releases oxygen as a waste product. For Calvin cycle, this stage combines carbon from carbon dioxide in the air and uses the chemical energy in ATP and NADPH to make glucose. So that's it. See you in our next lesson. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you will be notified for more videos like this.